Monster Maze Part 2 Creating and Moving Your Monster Let's start adding content to our game by creating our first actor. Inside of the Actors tab in the library, I'm going to click the plus icon to the right of the search bar to create our first actor. Inside of Game Salad, everything that you see is comprised of an actor. Actors can be characters, they can be game buttons, power-ups, or even coins. It's important to give descriptive name to our actor, so I'm going to rename our newly created actor. To do that, simply click on the actor that you just created in the library, and this will bring you to the actor editor. The actor editor is very similar to the scene editor. We still have the library available to us on the left hand side, and the inspector on the right. The only main difference is the center portion here that we call the logic stack. This is where we'll be adding behaviors to our actors to tell them what to do. I'm going to go ahead and rename my actor. I can do this in two ways. I can either double click the new actor name in the top of the logic stack, and I'll rename this actor monster, or inside of the inspector with the actor tab selected, I can find the name attribute and change the name that way. What I want to do now is apply an image to our actor. Inside of the images tab, I'm going to find the monster red one image and click and drag this to the top right of the inspector on top of that white box. When I release my mouse button, the image is applied to the actor. Now I'd like to change the size so that way it's more proportional to our screen. Inside of the inspector with the actor tab selected, I'm going to find the size attributes. I'm going to change the width to 60 and the height to 55. Next, let's go ahead and add the actor to our scene and preview our project. I'm going to click on the Scenes tab in the library and navigate to my scene editor for Maze Level 1. Next, I'll click and drag my monster actor onto the scene. If I'd rather delete an actor on the scene, I can click an actor and hit the delete key on my keyboard or the backspace key on my keyboard. But I'm going to keep the monster on our scene for right now. Let's go ahead and preview our project by clicking the preview game button in the top right of the tool. This will open a new tab and preview your project. Notice that nothing pops up, and this is because the current scene that is being previewed is actually the home screen, and that's not the scene we've been editing. We've been editing Maze Level 1, so on the right hand side make sure Maze Level 1 is active. And here you go, you can see our scene. Our actor isn't actually doing anything right now, and that's because we haven't told it to do anything. Let's go ahead and make our actor move. To do that, I'm going to close preview to head back to the scene editor inside of Game Salad. Next, I want to add some logic to our monster actor, so I'm going to click on the Actors tab in the library and then click on our monster actor. Behaviors are actions we can add to actors to control how they behave. Inside of the Behaviors tab in the library, we have a list of behaviors built in for us inside of Game Salad. There are different types. There's action behaviors, behaviors, and groups. Inside of the Behaviors category, I'm going to define our Move Behavior and drag it into the Logic Stack. I'm going to leave all of the values set to their default and preview the game. Again, make sure Maze Level 1 is active, and when you do that, you can see our monster moving to the right across the screen. If I close Preview and head back to the Actor Editor for the monster, the Move Behavior isn't restricted in any way, which is why the monster is just moving to the right. I'm going to go ahead and delete this behavior, and let's go ahead and set it up so our actor can move with the left, right, up, and down arrow keys on our keyboard. In order to do that, we're going to need something called a rule. Rules inside of Game Salad allow us to trigger behaviors based upon certain conditions. To create a rule, I can either click the Add Rule button in the top right of the logic stack, or inside of the Behaviors tab, I can scroll all the way down and open up my groups category and add a rule that way. As you can see, rules have a couple of different parts. We have the condition of the rule, the then section of the rule, and the else section of the rule. The then section of the rule will trigger behaviors inside of there only when the condition for the rule is met. On the flip side, the else section of the rule contains behaviors that will be activated when the condition for the rule is not met. Let's go ahead and set up our first rule. I'm going to make this work for our right arrow key, so inside of the condition I'm going to change this to read this actor receives event 
keyboard key, and then I'm going to put my mouse cursor inside of the text field and hit the right arrow key on my keyboard. GameStyle will automatically add the right keyboard key into the field, and there we go, we have our first condition set up. Inside of the then section, I'm going to drag the move behavior and plop it into the rule. You can set the direction and the speed for the rule using the appropriate fields. The direction you can think of as angles in a circle. Zero degrees would be towards the right, so that's good. We don't need to change anything. But I'm going to change the speed of the actor from 300 to 200. Next, before we preview, I'm going to rename this rule so we know which rule we're looking at. I'm going to double click on the word rule and name this move right. Let's go ahead and preview our project. Again, make sure that maze level 1 is active. And now, if I press the right arrow key on my keyboard, the monster will move to the right. Let's go ahead and set this up for the other arrow keys as well. Instead of creating new rules and adding more behaviors, I can go ahead and copy rules and just change the conditions. I'm going to collapse this rule to give us more screen real estate by clicking the collapse button at the far right of the rule. I'm going to select the rule by clicking on it and you'll know that it's selected when you see that blue glow around it. Now I'll copy it by clicking Control C on my keyboard or Command C on my keyboard and pasting it into the logic stack by Control V or Command V. Here's our duplicated rule. I want to go ahead and rename this. Let's call this one Move Left. And inside of the condition, I need to make sure I change the value to left. I did that by just clicking the left arrow key on my keyboard. Don't forget to change the direction inside of our move behavior. If you're thinking of angles in a circle, left would be 180 degrees. Let's go ahead and collapse this rule, copy and paste it, and I'll rename this one move up. Inside of the condition field, I'm going to change this to up, and the direction inside of the move behavior is going to be 90 degrees. One last time, I'm going to copy and paste and rename this move down. I'll change the condition to down and the direction in the move behavior to 270 degrees. I'll collapse all of these and as you can see, there's a lot of rules inside of our logic stack. Let's go ahead and create a group inside of the behaviors tab. I'm going to drag the group into the logic stack. Groups allow us to organize specific pieces of logic for better organization. I'm going to click each rule and hold down shift on my keyboard to select all of them and click and drag them into the group. I'm going to rename this group movement and then I'll collapse that as well. Let's go ahead and preview the game and see how that works. I can now use my right, left, up, and down arrow keys to move my monster throughout my scene. Thank you for watching part two. We'll see you in part three.